Jaha. Klockan börjar närma sig 12.30. Mm-hmm. Ni är alla hjärtligt, hjärtligt välkomna hit. Mitt namn är Peter Holmstedt. Jag är det vardags vd för Rice Holding. Rice Holding är, som ni kanske känner till, inte ett institut utan ett institutsägare. Och eh, vi arrangerar den här hela dagen tillsammans med de institut som vi äger och delägare i. Som är Swedish ICT som sitter här. Vi har SP någonstans här. Vi har Svea och Svea VF har jag sett och har Invencia. När vi börjar det här nu så får ni gärna när det är färdigt ta era stolar och flytta lite fram. För att det kommer bli lite interaktion. Eh, vi har ju en hel dag nu. Men just nu ska vi ha ett lunchseminarium som heter Trendsen seminarium som heter Rethinking the Swedish Innovation System. Och vi har två stycken gäster som jag kommer introducera alldeles inom kort. Det kommer att vara på engelska. Det kommer att vara interaktivt. Det kommer att vara i små block med lite frågor emellan så vi vill gärna ha lite dialog. Vi kommer också när det hela är slut utvärdera vad ni tycker om det här. Så du kommer springa kring några personer och intervjua er så att ställa små korta frågor så spring inte härifrån direkt när ni är snälla utan svara gärna för att det är intressant att utvärdera vad ni tycker om det här. Det kommer, vi kommer också ha en, två programpunkter till idag. I eftermiddag så kommer ins, alla institut att presentera vad de gör. Och klockan 17 till 18.45 ikväll så är det mingel med lite underhållning lagom till talet börjar. Så man går härifrån när talet eller när minglet är slut och då kommer man lagom till talet. Okej, okay. i morse så hade vi ett intressant seminarium med bland annat LKABs koncernchef Lars Erik Aro. Och en sak som han tryckte väldigt hårt på det är att det är otroligt viktigt att kunna förstå kundens behov. Det är det som gör att LKAB är världsledande, det är det som stärker LKABs konkurrenskraft. Nu så ska vi lära oss att förstå framtiden. För det är också väldigt viktigt i de här sammanhangen när man pratar forskning, forskningsinstitut och så vidare. Och de personer som ska hjälpa oss med det, det är Aiden Schonsi från Cork, Irland, I come back to you, Aiden, och Thomas Lund som också jobbar med de här frågorna men utifrån ett entreprenöriellt perspektiv. Aiden är en internationellt ledande forskare, innovationsanalytiker och kronikör. Och han, han skriver bland annat i Harvard Business Review, Forbes.com, Wall Street Journal. Han, han är journalist i grunden och jobbar med BBC och Channel 4. Hans kunder, det som är intressant med Hayden, det är att han jobbar med framtiden. Men han jobbar med producerande företag. Så att även om det kan vara lite out in the space ibland så är det hela tiden kopplat till en verklighet som vi själva känner igen. Och kunder idag är bland annat Symbian, Alcatel Lucent och Volvo. Hayden, it's a pleasure for me. To introduce you and today's trend seminar, Rethinking the Swedish Innovation System. Okay, thanks Peter. I, um, I'm going to wear my sunglasses, it's slightly rude, but the sun's coming this way. So, at the risk of looking like I've come out of the Sopranos. There we are. Um, I want to talk about how, if you start to think about how you rethink the innovation system or institutes have to start thinking about how they do things differently. What's the context for that and what kind of things do we need to take account of? And I'm going to do it in four phases. So I want to look at uh, the four phases are roughly mapped by these pull-ups, not, not quite, so let me explain. I want to look at the personal innovation lifestyle. So I want to look at what people like us do, what changes in our behavior and aspirations do to the innovation model. I want to look at culture as well, so from the personal to the cultural, what kind of things are we doing together and what kind of new movements, if you like, arise out of our personal innovation uh, or our personal innovations. I don't think we need to look at the enterprise and what enterprises are doing because I think enterprises are changing in a fundamental way. I think they are managing an incredibly complex set of changes And if they're your clients, you really need to understand that. And I hope I can provide some insights uh, into why you should understand and what you should understand about them. And finally, then try and look at policy. Um, I'm going to start, though, with an overview, because, as I said, I, I think that enterprises are changing. 
and the economy is changing. I truly believe we're moving into a new type of economy. And one, um, one feature, I think a disappointing feature of the current economic climate is we continue to talk about it as a financial crisis. And recession and recovery is framed in those terms in most of Europe and in America. Of course, Sweden doesn't have any kind of crisis. So, uh, you know, out there, people talk about crisis in this financial sense. Um, but I think we need to start trying to understand what, this, what the structural changes in the economy are. Because, again, if you, if you research and enterprises are your clients and startup is your aspiration, you need to be thinking about some of these things. In, in my view, anyway, these two products epitomize the global innovation race. So in the case of the Tata Nano, you have a product that's been billed as the cheapest auto in the world now for three or four years. That price tag has changed because the dollar's gone down. Uh, and also, it didn't meet its $2,000 price target. So it's now about $2,900. But then the IG came along. A Chinese company, Geely, of course now on Volvo, produced at around about the, I'd say now about the 1,500 euro mark. And two observations I make about that is that the first, that these are radical cost reductions. And they arise partly out of this global innovation race. And that global innovation race is about China and India, not about us. So no American company or European company comes close to that level of innovation. These guys are the pace setters. I think it also it, it illustrates what it illustrates a number of problems that we have in the economy, whether that's Europe or Sweden or America, uh, and what and the problems that companies have. And, and I'll summarise those and go through them, I hope, in enough detail not to bog us down. But these are, these are the result of unprecedented economies of scale. America did scale, but it can't do scale on the scale that the Chinese do scale. So in the case of, of the Geely, it's the sheer scale of their, their market and their capital power. And I think there was some, these unprecedented economies of scale are doing something to every Western enterprise. That is, they're losing this kind of oligopoly power they've had for maybe 80 years now. So a lot of the companies that maybe even some of the Swedish champions like Ericsson had the ability to dictate to markets. Without exaggerating that power, um, of course, they didn't quite dictate. There was always a competitive element to it. But things that happened up in the labs got funneled through a pipeline into the market, and the market more or less bought into that. That loss of oligopoly power with these cultural factors I'm going to go into, I think, uh, completely transforms markets. It transforms it because big companies can't do it any longer, and it also means that upstream R&D in big companies is becoming uh, less and less potent as, as a competitive weapon. Uh, actually, I think you can see that now Ericsson is starting to do services, like the new money service, which is um, a quite different tradition from its old labs to market tradition. I think a, a, a secondary problem that um, is driving innovation and is going to shape the kind of innovations that your institutes will have an opportunity to get to market is that I think we're reaching some kind of a, a limit on the growth of enterprises. If you look at Procter & Gamble, this year they need to grow their markets by $9 billion if they're to hit double-digit growth. So just to stay in the game, just to keep the stock markets happy, they've somehow got to find $9 billion of new business. That's this year. Next year it'll be 9.5, and next year it'll be 10.5. So these extraordinary growth requirements are driving innovation as well, and I think they're driving the new forms of innovation that we see, and that I know you'll have discussed probably this morning, things like open innovation. But they're also driving disruption in the value chain. So the way markets function from an enterprise point of view is changing. And the shorthand way to describe that is you, you now see the emergence of adjacency strategies. And I know adjacency is not a common word for people that don't speak English. So adjacency would be something like this. If, this, if somebody was standing next to me, they would be adjacent to me. 